Chem 2045's Exam 1, Fall 2009, number 19. It says that we are we're mixing um, 0 0.200 liters of HCl with this concentration, uh, of that concentration. And we have uh, 200 mils of barium hydroxide of this concentration. Both solutions start out at 20.48 degrees Celsius. But when we mix them together, there's a chemical reaction uh, that, pr that produces this much heat per mole. Okay. And the chemical reaction is that one proton and one hydroxide gives us water. That, in fact, is the reaction between HCl and barium hydroxide. You should, you should show that by uh, writing a net ionic equation. You should check back to our previous, uh, our previous exercises that we've done on the test and look for net ionic equations. You'll end up with this. The, the question also says that <coughs> the density of both solutions, assume, is just 1.00 grams per cubic centimeter. Uh, and it asks, what is the final temperature of the solution? So we, ha we have a concept of what's going on. We're mixing two reagents together. And the chemical reaction above me ha occurs, and it, re it releases heat indicated by a negative sign, he's a solution. What is that final temperature? So what comes to my mind first is Q equals mc delta t, since it's an equation we've, we've used a lot. It has delta t in it. We're looking for the final temperature, and we're given the initial temperature. Can we find the mass? Uh, sure, we can find the mass of the solution. That should come from the two volumes of the solution. In fact, let's do that real quick. Um, the ma so, so the mass of the solution is going to equal the density times the volume. Let's start out with the total volume of the solution, 0 0.400 liters. The reason that we're adding these two volumes up is because when we have to pour the chemicals together in order to really in order to react and release all that heat. Okay. Um, but my density is given in cubic centimeters, so I need to convert these liters into cubic centimeters. One liter gives me a thousand mils. One mil is equal to one cubic centimeter. And finally, using the density, one cubic centimeter is one gram. This is the mass of the solution. It comes out to be 400 grams. So this is uh, equal to m equals 400 grams. What is C? C is the specific heat of the solution. And although they don't, they don't give it in the front of your test, hopefully you've done enough chemistry problems or thermodynamic problems that uh, you know that the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. If not, learn it now, and it will become your tool of destruction. It's very helpful. So now we need Q and we need delta T. Delta T is essentially what we're looking for. Let's break down delta T into temperature final minus temperature initial. Right? We know the temperature initial of the solution. Do we know the heat released? It's not going to be minus 56.2 because we don't necessarily have just one mole of H plus. This per, mo this per mole is per mole of whatever you see. So since there's a one in front of this H plus, it's per one mole of H plus per one mole of OH minus per one mole of H2. Good enough, right? Also, I'm going to put a minus Q here, minus Q reaction, because I know that the heat, the natural heat released by the reaction um, is, is a heat release, right? It's going to be giving off heat. So I need an extra negative to cancel the negative number that I plug in for Q here, so that this whole number remains positive. That stuff can be very tricky, but the, the more problems you do, 
more thermodynamic problems you'll do, you'll have better uh, grasp of this Q stuff. If, if the solution were to, or if the reaction were to absorb heat, if this were a positive, we would use a positive Q up here. It would be a plus sign. So anyway, um, let's find out what the heat release of the system is. How much H plus or how much OH minus do we have? Let's figure out how much H plus we have. We have 0 0.200 liters of HCl. And it's of this concentration. If I multiply them together, it's just two moles per of HCl per one liter of HCl. This is what's meant by the molarity. If I multiply molarity times volume together, we just cancel. I'm left with moles of HCl. It's very good. But I'm going to continue this conversion. I know that for every one mole of HCl, I have one mole of H plus. This is telling me how many moles of H plus. If I, if I punch this out, I now know how many moles of H plus I have. And this comes out to be uh, 0 0.1742, uh, 17, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, by a similar process, we have we have 200 mils of barium hydroxide of this concentration. Okay. For one liter, liters cancel out, and then for every one mole of barium hydroxide, I have two moles of OH minus. This is going to tell me how many moles of OH minus I have. It comes out to be, I believe, the same thing. 2.1724 moles of OH minus. This means that all of the, all of the barium hydroxide uh, and all of the HCl plus came together, reacted perfectly together since since the H plus and the OH minus are equal to each other, they appear in a one-to-one -one ratio in this reaction. All of them go away, convert to H2O. All right? That means that I can take either this amount of H plus or this amount of OH minus and convert it into, into heat using this ratio. Because that ratio up there says if I say I take my moles of H plus, it's, this ratio here says for every one mole of either H plus or OH minus or H2O, it'll give me that much heat. So I'm going to take my, I'll arbitrarily take my moles of H plus. I could have taken my moles of OH minus, but um, I chose H plus instead. For every one mole of H plus, it gives off minus 56.2 kilojoules of energy. And this number comes out to be uh, minus 9.69 kilojoules, converting to joules, knowing that one kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. We get minus 9,690 uh, joules of energy. So that's how much, that's how much heat was released. When, when the two solutions came together. That's going to be our Q. Okay. We have Q, we have M, we have C, and we have temperature initial given to us in the problem. Uh, therefore, we can, we can solve this equation. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to divide both sides by M and C. And then add the temperature initial over. Oops. Uh, 
and I'm just going to plug in my values. Plug in temperature initial, which is 20.48 degrees Celsius, uh, minus the, the energy release. Now, it's a negative 96.90, so I'm cancel this negative. Joules. Divide by the mass of the solution, 400 grams. And then times spe specific heat, 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Notice that everything that needs to cancels. Grams cancel grams. Joules cancel joules. Celsius, which is on the double bottom, comes up to the top, adds with this Celsius. Gives you a final temperature of 26.3.